Good morning gamers, today I'm going to go over how to do each encounter of the Vow of the Disciple. If this guide helps you at all, please remember to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. To start the raid, upon landing you're going to move forward and kill the projection of Savathun. When it dies, all the ads will despawn and the door will open. Follow the path and reach the payload. When you reach the payload, some scorn will spawn along with three abominations. Stay near the payload while you kill the abominations to avoid pervading darkness, as getting to 10 stacks of this will kill you. This isn't a large deal here as it's not a darkness zone, but this is good to remember for later. After the three abominations are dead, the pervading darkness will stop stacking and you'll need to collect the orange spikes of knowledge. You can collect up to three of them at a time, you need to return them to the payload in order to move it to the next area. At each area, you'll continue this loop until you park the payload in front of the pyramid entrance and open the door. To get the secret chest during this intro, there will be a crystal at the second, third, and fourth stop, and the chest is located in the white building to the right of the fifth stop. Once you enter the pyramid, follow the path forward and write down the three symbols on the pillar before you drop down. You'll want to find these symbols hidden inside of rooms throughout the raid in order to unlock an extra chest at the end of the raid. You can get this chest once per week per account, and it drops a guaranteed red item every time. I'll be going over the location of each room in a separate video to make finding them easier. Follow the path to the first encounter and get ready. In this encounter, we need to defend the three obelisks from the attacking adds while getting the symbols to perform an offering to the obelisks before their ritual finishes. To start the encounter, shoot the crux in the center of the room. The orange bar adds shooting the obelisks will make them fill up faster, and when the obelisks fill up, the encounter wipes, so prioritize killing these adds before they attack. The three hexagon symbols on the panel in front of each obelisk will tell you where to go to get the symbols to offer to the obelisk. The top symbol will tell you what side of the area a, the Disciples Compass a Taken Knight will spawn. If it's a pyramid, it'll be on the left side of the arena, and if it's a traveler, it'll spawn on the right. Once this knight is dead, the panel will flash and the second symbol will appear. The second symbol will tell you what room to enter to kill the Glyph Keepers. Match the symbol to the symbol above the doors and enter that door. Kill the pack of Screebs and two Scorn Chieftains in the room in order to reset the white mechanic. When you enter the room, the panel outside will show either light or darkness symbol, which you'll need your ad clear partner to communicate. Near where the Chieftains spawn, there will be a light and darkness symbol on the wall, and a floating symbol will appear nearby after the Chieftain has died. Record that symbol. Once you have gotten the symbols from all three obelisk panels, you'll need to look closely at each obelisk and find all three symbols on one obelisk. Once you have found the obelisk with all three, shoot the correct symbols very quickly to make your offering to the obelisk and end the round. You'll rinse and repeat each of these steps two more times in order to give the other two obelisks their offering, then the encounter will end. Claim your loot and follow the path to the next encounter. Welcome to the first boss fight of Val. This fight is fairly straightforward and has three main roles that need to be performed simultaneously. Glyph Seekers, Boss Stunners, and Ad Clears. We'll go over each of these roles one at a time, and I found that a 2-2-2 split works extremely well. One of the Glyph Seekers will start the encounter by shooting a crux near the door to open it, 
Then enter the room to collect up to three glyphs. While you're inside, you will gain stacks of pervading darkness, and if you get up to ten stacks, you will die. There will also be two yellow bar wizards and some shadow thrall attacking you. Ignore these as you can't effectively kill them in the time that you have. Once you have collected your glyphs, call for the door to be opened as you run out, shoot the three glyphs on the obelisk with the other seeker, then they will run in to collect up to three more. Collect all nine glyphs to begin damage phase. If at any point you're getting high on darkness and don't have a full three stacks, just leave and shoot what you do have. Let your partner go in for the missing glyphs. Boss Stunner's job is fairly straightforward. You'll stand on opposite sides of the boss and one person will get close to bait out his slam. When he slams, his face will glow yellow, indicating you can shoot it. Shoot the face to take his gaze and his backpack will open up, allowing your partner to shoot inside to stun him. While he's stunned, take a moment to shoot any of his rockets that are flying around or any ads that are being annoying. Rinse and repeat until damage phase. Ad clear's job is to keep the ads away from the boss stunners and the obelisk. I recommend prioritizing the orange bar scorn and the snipers. The scorn will attack the obelisk to cause a wipe and the snipers just plain hurt. I also recommend the ad clears to run special finisher to make sure everyone gets at least some ammo throughout the encounter. Damage phase is very simple. After the nine glyphs are input, the plate on the side that the boss came up will begin to glow. Stand on the plate to do damage and don't get off until it runs out. When the plate fades, move to the middle plate and continue damaging, then the third plate. If you do enough damage fast enough, he may teleport before using all three plates. Once he does, collect ammo and run up the stairs that just appeared to rinse and repeat. Both the boss room and the glyph room will continue to get larger as you climb the arena, so make sure you watch your footing. Once you reach the break in his health bar, he'll go into final stand where he runs to the very top of the arena and you just have to stand on the plates to DPS him until he dies. Once he's dead, run forward and grab your loot. You've made it to the first jump puzzle. Congrats and enjoy the views. As you progress the puzzle, you'll reach rooms where ads spawn constantly with a crux in them somewhere. Shoot the crux to change the platforms to help your friends get through the puzzle. Definitely don't troll them by closing a platform when they're not expecting it. Once one person makes it to the next ad room, the path will stabilize and all the platforms will be available to jump on. Follow the path here to get access to a secret chest containing gear you have previously collected, as well as raid specific mods. Then onward to the next encounter. Third encounter is divided into chambers with an antechamber between each chamber. There will also be a wipe timer, meaning you need to keep moving once you start the encounter. Throughout the encounter, you'll make use of three different relics to perform specific jobs, and people will need to take turns with the relics as you have a 30 second cooldown after dropping a relic before you can pick it up again. In the first chamber, you'll see a pyramid shard which shoots a constant beam of energy. Picking that up will start the encounter and spawn a Scorn Chieftain, a Taken Phalanx, and a Shielded Taken Knight. The Taken Knight can only be killed with the Pyramid Shard, and killing it will extend the wipe timer. The Chieftain and Phalanx are known as Glyph Keepers. When they die, they will each drop a set of three symbols. The symbols near the Chieftain can only be seen by someone not holding the Relic, and the symbols near the Phalanx can only be seen by someone holding the Relic. Compare the sets of symbols to find the common symbol 
and shoot it near the door. Enter the antechamber and deposit the relic. When you deposit the pyramid shard, your timer will reset and an Aegis will appear on the opposite receptacle. Pick up both to continue. If you ran relic in Vault of Glass, this will be familiar to you as it's the same relic. The primary job of this relic is to use your sword block button to cleanse the pervading darkness off of everyone. You'll split into two groups going left and right to clear everything. The glyph keepers will appear on each side and once again you'll need to kill them, compare the symbols, and make note of the matching symbol. When these two enemies die, a taken knight will appear near the exit and needs to be killed to add time to the timer. Continue clearing until you get a second set of glyph keepers and symbols. Starting in this room, whenever a taken failing spawns, an overload hobgoblin will also spawn on that side. Once you have the two matching symbols from both sets of glyph keepers, shoot both symbols near the door to enter the antechamber. A few screams will spawn, just kill them and deposit the relics. In this room, you'll use the same tactics, however this time there will be a third relic in the form of an Eye of Riven. This will be used to cleanse the Taken Immunity Blight Balls that are shielding enemies throughout the room. Follow the same tactics used before, however this time the relic bearers should jump through the middle of the room to bounce back and forth to run mechanics while everyone else ad clears. Clear the room, shoot the matching symbols, watch out for screams, and enter the antechamber to exchange your relics. In the final room, you'll do all the same mechanics as in the previous room, however there is a bit more jumping to do. Once you clear the room, deposit the relics, and the encounter will end. Congratulations on making it to the final jumping puzzle. This one is pretty straightforward. Go up the stairs on either side and follow the path until you reach the area where you can only go up. Climb up and kill the adds in all four rooms to extend the platforms ahead. Jump down to them and group up near a door to open it. Once the door opens, follow the stairs up to the top, play a quick game of Guardian Golf with your friends, then get ready for the final boss. You have your You've made it to the final boss. This is quite simply my favorite fight in Destiny to date. To start the encounter, simply walk forward until it starts. When it does, everyone will begin to get pervading darkness and Rolf will have a large crux above his head. Have one person shoot the crux to get leeching force to prevent the darkness stacks. While dodging the boss's lasers, kill the glyph keepers on each side. and then have the person with leeching force stand on the gift plate in the middle. This will spawn two large cruxes, one on each side of the boss. Have one person shoot each crux and both people will take the buff from the person who had it. Then have one of those two people stand on the plate and the first person who got the buff will shoot one crux and another person will shoot the other crux. If done right, you should now have three people with leeching force. While this is happening, Compare the sets of glyphs to find the matching symbol, like in the third encounter, and make note of it. One person will be responsible for calling out which of the six pillars in front of you have the matching symbol. Label them L1, L2, L3, and R1, R2, R3, with one being the closest to spawn for easy callouts. Once three people have leeching force, two of those people will soak Rolk's laser to turn leeching force into emanating force. 
This will allow those two people to enter the barrier to dunk on the pillars that are called out and shrink the barrier. Have the third person stand on the gift plate and rotate the buffs in the same way again. Repeat the cycle until you have deposited six buffs into the pillars and the boss teleports up the stairs into the damage arena. Prepare yourself and follow the boss up the stairs. The boss has three main attacks here. He'll dash at someone and attempt to hit them with his glaive. He'll fire a laser at his injured cardinals. And if you get too close, he'll roundhouse kick you in the face. When he does the glaive dash, he'll leave the glaive on the ground after and walk away from it. One person needs to shoot this to get leeching force, then soak the following laser to turn it into emanating force. Near where the glaive was left, will be a symbol that will correlate with the pillars on the corners of this arena. Someone without the buff will need to call out where this person with the buff needs to dunk at. As these pillars never change, the front left is Traveler, the back left is Pyramid, back right is Darkness, and front right is Light. When you dunk at a pillar, a weak point will appear on either his shoulders or his hips. Once you have dunked four buffs and shot all four weak points, you can begin DPS. He will continue to move around and attack all through DPS phase, so stay on your guard and make use of damage supers instead of sitting in a well as you may be used to. If you don't kill him, he'll eventually go immune and you just run down the stairs to avoid being pushed out by the barrier and repeat the mechanics until he dies. Once he's down, he'll explode and drop his glaive. And if you've done the secret chest puzzle I mentioned at the beginning of this guide, you'll get a second red frame drop once a week. I hope this guide has helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to know how to get the secret extra chest, make sure you check out that video. Thank you for watching.